Bumper to bumper, we love them old cars. Be it Ford or GM or be it a Mopar. People, power, and passion, you know that is our deal. So tune in to our TV show with Rusty at the wheel. Oh, yeah. Oh, come on, Rusty. Sleep in behind the wheel. Okay, g'day viewers and welcome to Bumper to Bumper. Well, today I'm at Team Swinburne, which is at Hawthorne, Victoria, and I've got Ryan from Team Swinburne. Ryan, g'day and welcome to Bumper to Bumper. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us. That's all right. No problem at all. Now, Team Swinburne do a, an electric car, like a Formula One type of car. Yes. First of all, tell me a little bit about Team Swinburne. Yep. Team Swinburne's been around for since 2000. Uh, we've been building Formula SAE cars in the, in the Australasian Formula SAE Championship. Uh, this year we have our 2013 car. So uh, we design, build and, and race a, a Formula style race car every single year. Now, Swinburne is a university. Yes. Okay, so you're a part of the University of Swinburne. Yep. Um, You've been. How did how did this program get evolved? Yep. So it's um it's it's done through uh, the engineering uh, sort of faculty oh, yeah. at Swinburne. So we're we're all a group of engineers uh, ranging from uh, from mechanical all the way through uh, civil and also um, of course electrical and mechatronics. Um, we also branch out into the commerce department, uh, dealing with sponsors and marketing and that sort of stuff. But uh, yeah, it started as an engineering sort of program, and it's really sort of developed into a whole sort of operation. Right, so virtually end to end in regards to the design, development, the, the building of the, the, the car and also the marketing and the sponsorship of the car. So that's fantastic. It must be uh, good as a student. You're obviously a student. Yeah, yes, I am. Yeah, yeah. so I'm, I'm in my final year of mechanical engineering. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, part of our final year project, but we can also do it pretty much right from first year all the way to final year. So it's, uh, it really captures pretty much every single student at, uh, at university level. Fantastic. Um, and, and how has it been for you to actually uh, do this course? Um, because it's a real application. Yeah, absolutely. So engineering. So when we're when we're in the classroom, we really learn about uh, the sort of the principles that you would use uh, when designing something like this. And this sort of project, an, act, an extracurricular activity, we're actually able to put in what we learn at university into a into a proper sort of uh, project. And at the end of the day, see it uh, go from naught to 100 pretty quickly. So it's a it's a pretty rewarding experience. No, fantastic. And you're actually uh, learning as you go, as you said. How's your um, your your racing ability been going with the drivers that you have for the uh, for the car? Obviously, you're racing it. So what's happened there? Have you had many wins on the board? Yeah. So in 2012, we uh, we came first in the electric division. Uh, last year, we came second. Uh, obviously, this year, of course, we're going to come first. Saying that uh, at the moment. Um, yeah. So we we develop our, our drivers. We're all we're all university students. So we race it personally. Not many of us have had too much background. We've had a little bit of karting experience and that sort of stuff. But um, yeah, it's pretty much pretty raw drivers driving these sort of things. So that's why we have a lot of driver driver training, and that's where we uh, we think we can pick up a lot of points. All right, let's go and have a look at the actual car itself, the 2013 model, yep. and uh, see what it's made of. Fantastic. All right, let's go, Ryan. So Team Swinburne races in the Australasian leg of the Formula SA competition. There's uh, legs all around the world, a few in the US, uh, a couple in Europe and also Japan. So we race in the Australasian which is held in, uh, in late December at Calder Park as Andrew mentioned just before. So the whole competition is about engineering practice, so it's about designing a car to best suit the specification of rules that we are given at the start of the year. So they, they limit things like the type of chassis, uh, manufacturing, uh, the speed of the engines, the power of the engines and what sort of capacity batteries we have. Uh, the competitions actually run in both electric and petrol, so we race completely against petrol cars in the Australasian comp. Um, we're quite new, so Swinburne from 2000 to 2010 raced a purely a petrol car, and in 2011 they made the switch to electric car, and that's that's what we have here. So electric in Australia is quite new, so we're still developing the technologies to really uh, really push against the petrol cars. But uh, as of this year and, uh, and the future years are really starting to uh, starting to give them a good run for their money in the competition. So here we have our 2012 chassis. As you can see, it's completely designed and built by the uh, by the students of the team. So uh, Swinburne has really, really allowed us to develop our skills that we've learnt in our coursework to actually apply it here. As you can see, it's a it's a full um, chromo chromoly uh, space frame 
completely designed by the students, uh, full roll, roll cage as designed by the specifications of the rules that I mentioned earlier. So uh, at the moment, as you can see, it's completely apart. All the body panels are around the, around the workshop. We're actually letting our first and second years uh, restore the car back to basically a working order. It's a really good project for them to be able to get some experience on the team first and second year when they're not able to really design components to get the practicality that they'll use in third and fourth year. So that's a really good project to keep as many students from Swinburne in the team as possible. So every other uh, university in Australia that offers engineering competes. Um, there's about 20 to 25 in, um, universities in Australia. We also have a couple of uh, participants from, the, from New Zealand and also UK and, uh, and around Japan and that sort of stuff. Uh, we then, we then uh, split the comp into two sort of sections. There's a static and dynamic events. The static events are stuff like a, a presentation of how we came to the design that we have here. So why we've chosen the wing or why we've chosen these tyres. And then we also have a range of dynamic events. Dynamic events range from a, an acceleration, which is a 0 to 75 metre, as quick as you can. Uh, we also have a skid pan, which is basically a large figure eight, and you've got to go around that twice. Then onto a, an autocross, which is a really, really tight sort of circuit. Um, basically, a, a, if you go to a go kart sort of track, you'd really you'd cone that out and quite tight. So it's all about that quick acceleration because we are students, so we're not not doing 200 kilometres per hour, unfortunately. Uh, we then move on onto the last day for the endurance, and that's where the, the main points are, which is a which is a uh, about a 30 minute long race. Uh, two drivers, one uh, one start. We go in for a driver swap, and then uh, come in for another one. So that's basically the whole competition, and that's uh, that's race at the end of the year in Australia. Okay, I've got Andrew, who is the Chief Engineer for Team Swinburne. Andrew, how are you going? 
Good, thanks. That's good, mate. Now, you're to go through the technical aspects of this car, so tell me a little bit about the what the car is, how it's made up, and some of the special components in it. All right, uh, so this here is our 2013 car. It's a carbon fibre monocoque chassis. Uh, this is our first carbon fibre monocoque. Um, it has a rear space frame. Uh, we have two electric motors. Uh, they're limited to 85 kilowatts each. Oh, sorry, 85 kilowatts total. Um, each one of those motors um, sends power to one of the rear wheels. So we're able to control how much torque goes to uh, each of the rear wheels individually. Yeah, is that important for an electric car? Uh, it certainly is. Um, it allows us to um, really control how the car handles dynamically as we go around corners. Um, so it's similar to a mechanical differential, except we have no mechanical components, so it's less weight. All right, and tell us a little bit more about the car as well. Uh, so this car weighs uh, 340 kilograms. Uh, it's our first car with a um, full aero package. So that includes the front wing, the under tray and the rear wing. Uh, so we hope to improve uh, these figures uh, this year. All right. Now, is it all about speed? Because obviously if you've got spoilers on it, then obviously you worry about aerodynamics. What speed is the actual car going? Uh, the car typically goes uh, top speed about 110 kilometres an hour on the track, uh, but it is capable of 140. Um, most of our racing is done in a tight autocross circuit, uh, so we're really looking for cornering ability and um, fast acceleration and deceleration. All right, so for the viewers at home, what, kind of, what are some of the tracks you've actually raced on? Uh, we typically race at a testing facility in Werribee, that's uh, where the competition has been held. This year we'll be racing at Calder Park. Ooh, that'd be good, down the drag strip or...? Uh... Uh, I can't remember which track we'll be on. Now, is it about conserving power for an electric car as well? Because obviously if, if it was a, an endurance race for eight hours, would you be able to last that long or what's the typical race time? Uh, so our endurance event is 22 kilometres, uh, so we design the car around that. Uh, so we have to take into account weight, drag and losses in our drivetrain system. Uh, so at the start of the year when we are developing our car, we do our calculations to work out just how much power we need to carry on board. All right. And what are some of the, uh, the, 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 the wheels and tyres that you're using on the car? And we actually... Oh, I'm gonna, I was going to say something, I was going to make a fool of myself, but anyway, let, let's talk about those wheels and tyres first. Uh, so at the start of the year when we choose our tyres, we look at um, a range of racing slicks that are available. Um, on this particular car, we've chosen a Hoosier R25B on a 13-inch uh, rim. Yep. And um, yeah, we choose these tyres based on their performance, uh, testing data that is available to us, as well as the tyres availability itself. Um, we obviously need to get these tyres shipped in from somewhere, and usually the closer, the better for us. So the torque curve of an electric motor varies from an internal combustion in the sense that you have your torque almost immediately when you put your foot on the throttle. So from about zero RPM, we have our full motor torque available to us. So that 300 Newton meters in this car uh, gets translated to about 1200 Newton meters at the wheels. So you make it quite tricky to drive. So at the heart of our 2013 car, we have 108 lithium polymer battery cells which store our energy that we use for our races. Uh, this gives the car uh, 450 volts which we then send to our two motor controller inverters. Uh, this takes a DC current and transforms it into an AC current which is used in our brushless DC motors. Uh, these brushless DC motors uh, have fewer moving parts than uh, brushed motors and certainly uh, fewer moving parts to an internal combustion engine. Uh, they have incredibly high efficiencies, somewhere around the 90 to 96%. Um, this allows us to get most of the energy from our batteries to our wheels. Uh, these motors are capable of 50 kilowatts continuous uh, with peaks of 100 kilowatts and typical torque output of about 300 Newton meters. Uh, this can make it quite difficult to get the power to the ground, uh, so we rely on a lot of driver training. Hi, my name's Sam. Uh, as Andrew said, uh, driver training is quite important for this team. Um, as we're all students, a lot of us don't have a great deal of race driving experience. 
So in a racing environment, um, this car's quite different to what you'd expect a petrol car to feel like. Uh, obviously, as you lift off of the throttle in a petrol car, the engine will slow you down. In this, this situation, um, the motor's just free spinly, it's to spin freely, which means that we have to be on the brakes a lot quicker than we normally would be. Um, our, our main purpose of this competition is to get around a set track as, as fast as possible. Um, the majority of the, the courses we work on are very tight, um, technical sections, a lot of slaloms, um, chicanes, hairpins, we really don't have a great deal of straights. Um, I think the longest we get is about 75 metres. Um, so really it's, it's a very technical um, technical circuit that requires a lot of driver focus. After driving um, the endurance race, uh, which is 22 kilometres, usually around 20 to 30 laps, depending on the course layout, um, the physical exertion is, is quite high. Um, often the, the drivers come out and, and are completely exhausted and they have absolutely no energy left. Um, and really need to get uh, a lot of fluids back into them because it is, is quite a lot of energy you use to drive these cars um, and, and yeah, a lot of people seem to think it's, it's quite easy to drive a race car but um, I promise it's, it's quite different. My favourite show, my favourite time of the week. Tune in to Bumper to Bumper. Oh yeah. Tune in to our TV show with Rusty at the wheel. The KO Boxing Show is proudly sponsored by Ultratune Auto Service Centres.